<laughs> Not anymore. No more pain. <laughs> Um, I have presented with migraines, which started about four or five years ago. For me, it's very seldom painful, but they present themselves in the form of aura. So light sensitivity, um, sound sensitivity, facial pressure along the sinus cavities, temporal discomfort, um, and the most recent symptom is um, the ringing in the ears along with just the pressure in front of my ears. I have seen three ENT doctors, my primary care physician, acupuncture, chiropractic therapy, physical therapy. Um, I've had um, balloon surgery for my sinus cavities. I have done a sleep study um, I've got a mouth guard from my dentist for clenching. Um, I've seen psychiatry for anxiety. I have pretty much done it all, um, including um, your non-traditional route of um, essential oils as well. Oh wow, physician-wise anywhere from 18 to 20. And as far as the medications, the list is long. So. I would say anywhere from 15 to 18 different medications for various ailments. Um, so for me, the weather highly impacts me. So if it's cloudy or maybe 24 to 48 hours before it rains, the symptoms are the worst, um, ranging from anywhere from about a seven to an eight prior to the day it rains, it could be a 10 easy. Um, anxiety level definitely triggers me. It used to be seven days a week every single day. And it's probably now five to seven days a week. Okay. Um, so it ranges, um, it might not necessarily be a full day. It could be um, just periodic moments within a day, but there's not a day that goes by um, where I have at least one symptom. Um, but all of the symptoms that I described before, the light sensitivity, sound sensitivity, um, pressure, um, during those those episodes, it gets pretty bad. So it's around a 10, a nine or 10. So once the aura starts, it throws me into a panic attack. So instantly I feel jittery. My voice starts to crack. Um, I feel overwhelmed, almost as if I need to just sit down in a quiet space and uh, be isolated so that I can regain, you know, my, my composure. Um, the lowest would probably be a three and the highest a 10. I take a daily dose in the morning of the lowest um, dosage of clonazepam, 0.5 milligrams. I have to take that every single day. Um, although I've tried numerous amounts of medication, including hypnotherapy for anxiety and essential oils for anxiety. Um, I always feel like someone's pushing on me. So it's not necessarily that the room is spinning but it's it's almost like i'm leaning to one side which makes my gait slightly heavy um, the gait is more heavy i think when i'm having an episode of either the panic attack or the the migraine um, but it, it's it, that kind of feeds more back into the panic attack as well so it's just like this vicious cycle of anxiety and and mixed with the feeling off balance um, and that's pretty much my life. I've never fallen. I have definitely lost my balance where I may occasionally, you know, bump into something or have to watch my gait really closely, I think more than anything, so that I at least appear to walk straight or be standing up straight. But you had to be always on guard. I'm always on guard. Um, the fatigue. So I can't remember the last time I woke up feeling extremely just energetic, refreshed. Um, I do work out occasionally, and even after working out, I feel like I need to just lay down. I will muster up the energy to go work out early in the morning. Um, it's typically when I go, but I wake up probably with an energetic level of about four. And I normally, my normal routine is go take my meds and go have at least half a cup of coffee, um, which does perk me up some and actually helps for me relieve some of my migraine symptoms. Um, but usually midday, anywhere from 
two to three is when I notice I start to decline and I'm just tired. I'll make it through the day, but typically by nighttime or the end of the day, I'm ready definitely just to, to lay down and call it quits. The problem is I have problems falling asleep. So I'm usually up, you know, pretty late unless I can just make myself turn the television off and just go to bed. Yeah, so I'm a soccer mom. So I've got two boys who play soccer. Um, my husband pretty much handles the, the soccer responsibilities as far as their practices and things like that. Um, but I still have motherly responsibilities, homework, cooking, um, making sure the boys are ready for the next day. I will admit, I just muster up the energy to make it through. Um, and so I'll just do what I typically do best. And for me, that's, I just keep going, um, because I have to, so. I would say when I first came, it was, I was definitely in a very traumatic state. Um, I would have ringing in my ears, light sensitivity, sound sensitivity. My gait was off. I was having panic attacks. Certain um, smells would trigger me severely. Um, looking back now to doing a comparison of then and now, I definitely would say I'm about 98% better. Um, I no longer have, upon awakening, ringing in my ears, light sensitivity, sound sensitivity. I definitely don't have the head pressure that I was having before. The only remaining symptom I would say for me, which is very mild, would be just spicy scents. So there are certain scents that may trigger me um, but I feel like I've learned how to, with the help of physical therapy as well, control it um, over time. And so there is a lot, um, aside from the braces that go along with the therapy that really help. So physical therapy being a very huge component of gaining back a healthy lifestyle has contributed tremendously to my well, overall well-being. So for me, it would be just the pressure in my sinuses, occasionally just the tenderness in my scalp. Um, what I really noticed was more of just like the neck behind, the occipital pressure was very tender. Um, that part has helped a lot. I even had pressure behind my eyes um, and right here, like in front of my ears, even behind my ears. Um, all of this was just extremely tender. Um, throughout this process and wearing the braces, widening the mouth, physical therapy, like I said before, it's been a tremendous life-changing um, therapy session, honestly, that I've gone through. Um, I would say 99% if not 100. For me, it was more um, just the, the pressure. I very rarely have that anymore. Um, every once in a while I'll experience it, but for the most part, that pressure isn't there. And if so, it's mainly because of just my allergies and seasonal allergies. I do not have that at all. Um, and that excites me because I couldn't even go to concerts. I couldn't go to crowds. I went to my first concert in May, um, was very nervous, took earplugs. I just knew I wasn't going to make it. And I actually had the best time of my life. Balance, I would say 98%. So whenever the smells um, affect me or I'm dehydrated, because I do work out six days a week, um, that is my key indicator that I need to drink more fluids. Um, and like I said before, the smells, I've learned how to work my way through that piece of it. Um, but very seldomly, you know, just for a quick minute, may I, I might feel off. Um, the longest I experience it, maybe 15 minutes, um, but it's not even something like I can take an Excedrin migraine if I needed to, which I don't have to even take my abortive medicine. I haven't taken in two years. Um, so I am easily controlled with just an Excedrin migraine, honestly. You can tell I'm very energetic. <laughs> I was usually tired by midday. Um, now I'm like the little energizer bunny. So if I'm tired now, it's just because I've done too much and I'm just naturally wearing myself out. But that is no longer a factor. What percentage did you put on? Uh, that's 100% cured. You mentioned 100% gone. I, I, honestly, the ringing in the ears, 
it, I don't even remember the last time it happened. Um, so I, I don't think it's really an issue anymore because I don't remember when it happened last. I didn't know what to expect. Um, I felt helpless. I felt like I was not curable. Um, it actually brings tears to my eyes thinking about it because I was at my last straw. Um, I am a nurse. I do clinical drug research. And so I researched so much about it before coming to see you. Um, and it's funny and interesting because I have now met direct reports that I work with who are actually going through the exact same thing. Um, so to hear their, what they're going through now and to see where I'm at now, um, they, I think, find hope in me. But I will say the expectation I completely didn't, I did not know what to expect. There were times when my teeth were adjusting just from the therapy. Um, I remember sitting on the edge of the bed crying because I thought, is this really going to help me? Um, and it's just an adjustment period. And so as your teeth are shifting, as you're doing everything in your medical expertise to make sure that my bite was becoming more and more aligned, I will say there were times of skepticism and not knowing whether or not I was really going to be cured. But now that I look back, it's a process. You really have to trust the process. You have to do exactly what you're told. Um, and if you fall by the wayside, honestly, just get back up and do what, it, what you're supposed to do. It's that simple. Um, but it is a journey and I'm not going to lie to you and say that it's something that is a quick turnaround. It definitely requires patience and time and consistency of doing what it is you need to do with your physical therapist and doing what it is you need to do that Dr. Raman tells you. I didn't want surgery. That was an easy no brainer for me. Um, and number two, it was a, it, the financial and financial implications was a major impact on my decision. Um, it was a, a longer process, but at the end, here I am. I'm, I'm grateful that I chose the route that I chose. Um, but like I said before, you have to do your job as well. It's not something that Dr. Rahman is going to be able to just, you get up out of the chair and walk away, go home and don't do what it is you're supposed to do. Um, you have to be consistent. But that was the easiest option for me from a financial standpoint. And just, like I said, over time, you've got to just fo follow the rules of what it is you're being told to do. I would totally do it all over again. Yeah, I definitely would do it over again. It, it's not an inexpensive um, treatment plan, but when you get to your wit's end and you don't know which other way to turn and you want to go back to, to feeling the way you used to, it's a no brainer. Like for me, at least I felt like this was something I had to do. I really had no other choice. And now that I look at other individuals across the United States that I work with that are going down the same path, um, it's very similar. So I knew that what I was doing, I was on the right track. I knew that I was in good hands. And then too, they could tell like, okay, the things weren't going great in the way that they should have been going. Um, just listening to my story. So, um, I wouldn't change a thing. And this was the path that I was supposed to take. And so it was, it was worth it. Wow. I never thought about it that way. Um, I would say it's a tremendous impact in a positive way. Um, I was teary eyed before I didn't know my left hand from my right hand. I felt like for me, I was in this manic phase of trying to figure out what was wrong with me. And so whenever you're in that state of mind, um, you feel like you're losing control. And so over time, looking at where I'm at now, I'm so much more happier. Um, but you learn how to control the thing, the external forces or factors that contribute also to what was causing the issue. And so by that, I mean, for me, I was clenching. Um, so my job, my health, my eating habits, there were also other factors that contributed to, um, this disorder that I developed. I'm so happy it could help you. Yeah, I'm happy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
You know, I think anytime you are going through cosmetic changes, there's a level of concern and worry. Um, just because you want to make sure that it's perfected, it matches your, your face, and in this case, my teeth. And so for me, um, I put my trust and faith in you, Dr. Raman, and your staff. It was the only place that I would go. You knew my mouth, you knew my history. And for me, it was very important um, as I was going through that journey to make sure that I was with a dentist who knew my mouth. Um, the smile is amazing. I absolutely love it. The f interesting thing is most people that have known me for years just thought I went through braces having my mouth widened and then the teeth put back together again. Most don't even know that they're veneers. So that was the point. I'm very glad I'm only doing the uppers and not the bottoms. They match perfectly. And so I'm very pleased with my smile because I am an individual who smiles constantly and so thank you for all the hard work and the perfection that you put into my mouth.